Hi, I'm Nick Malik, and welcome to An Evil Mind, a video crime blog from Xenobooks. Uh, today we are going to talk about the men's action adventure series novels of the 1970s and 80s, and specifically about author Don Pendleton. Um, the defining characteristics of the men's action series novels. Uh, number one, violence. Um, they are direct descendants of the pulp books, except really amped up in terms of body count and uh, descriptiveness of, of the violence. Uh, speaking of Don Pendleton, nobody could write a gunshot wound to the head like Don. Um, it, the, the descriptions of the, of the blood spatter, of the you know, brain matter flying through the air, bone fragments, the guy, the guy could teach Clive Barker a few tricks. Um, also, generally, these series tend to center around lone vigilantes, um, although this was not 100% true. Um, there would also be straight-ahead private eye series, uh, such as, you know, Hardman. Uh, there would be police series, such as uh, William Murphy's Rizzoni and Jackson. And, uh, but in the main, they were usually like one man against crime, one man against uh, enemy spies, you know, somebody out for revenge. Um, you know, Don Pendleton's creation, Mac Bolan, the executioner, is probably the exemplar of this, but he was far from the only one. There was also, hey, off the top of my head, the penetrator, uh, the death merchant, the expediter, the sharpshooter, the marksman, the assassin. Those three are a story unto themselves. There's, there's a connection there. Uh, there's the enforcer. There, did I say, did I say penetrator? Did I say death merchant? Um, the butcher. Uh, there's going to be, and then, you know, those are the lone wolves. Actually, there was one called the lone wolf. <laughs> there was a guy who's, who, that was his, that was his crime fighting name. Um, but there were also teams there, you know, there was, of course, as we move into the 1980s, there were the, uh, there was Phoenix Force, there was Able Team, there was the SOBs, uh, there was the Cat Squad, there was the Death Squad, who were eh, rogue cops, uh, vigilante cops of a type. So, you know, obviously, you know, these things were not created out of whole cloth. They were the response to the success of the Executioner series in particular. But even Pendleton did not originate this. By the time he writes his first Mac Bolan book, War Against the Mafia, in 1969, uh, the Nick Carter Killmaster books had already been running for five years, and and in that incarnation, I mean, Nick Carter started as a private eye character back in the 1880s. He was a dime novel uh, private investigator, and but in the 60s, the series gets resurrected so that he can be uh, like a, like a James Bond ripoff. He was a spy, worked for an acronym agency, the usual 60s spy doodah. Um, and those were, they were a numbered series. Obviously, you know, obviously you know, Pendleton did not even invent the idea of, of the series. Uh, Bolin was not even his first series. I believe Stuart Mann was the name of a private eye character that he did earlier in the 60s. Um, you know, I mean, Ed McBain had the 87th Precinct series of police novels. Obviously there were uh, private eye novels that, you know, in such number, uh, for example, the Shell Scott books. I mean, those started in the 50s. I think by the time we get to the end of the 60s, there's probably three, four dozen of those things. I mean, Shell Scott ran forever. So it's not so much that Pendleton originated the particular elements of the genre. It's just that he had the massive success and, and inspired the most, um, the most imitators. But even some of those really are advanced to the point where they, they are not imitators really um they stand very strong speaking of william murphy him and, and richard sapir sapir wrote the destroyer series remo williams you may have seen the fred ward movie back in the 80s um or there i think there was a very short-lived 1990s syndicated uh destroyer tv show if not at least a pilot for that and of course there's been talk of resurrecting it as a movie uh you know for for a long time now but that's probably the second best known of this type of series. And I think definitely worthy of, 
uh, an episode of itself sometime in the future. We will also talk about the, those two authors as uh, their their other works. Um, Pendleton, we'll talk about him here real quick. Like I said, he's he's probably the best exponent of, of these kind of authors, and a lot of the authors of these books were unsung. And in some cases, uncredited, because usually they wrote under house names. You know, a publisher for a given series would just have an author name. This goes back, again, to the pulps. You know, Walter Gibson, you know, wrote uh, the Shadow novels under the house name Maxwell Grant. Eventually, other people would write those. Uh, uh, you know, Lester Dent wrote the Doc Savage novels um, under a house name. So, you know, you would see, you know, so-and-so would write, uh, you know, the, the Penetrator books, for example, you know, under the name uh, Chet Cunningham. Well, Chet Cunningham was not always the same guy. Once you get into the 1980s and the Boland books move from their original home at Pinnacle Books into the Gold Eagle imprint, which was actually a, a subdivision of Harlequin Books, Worldwide Press was the overall company, you start seeing them, you know, credited as, you know, Don Pendleton's Mac Bowen, and then it would give the actual author's name inside the uh, inside the cover on the copyright page. But, they, they, you know, that, those guys never made it onto the covers of the books themselves. And, then, you know, Gar Wilson, who wrote the Phoenix of Four series. Well, Gar Wilson was not always the same guy. Dick Stivers, who did Able Team, not always the same guy. So there's a grand tradition of that, but sometimes you never knew who they were. And there has been... In the years since the 1970s and 80s, quite a lot of detective work devoted to uh, you know discovering just who these folks are. Uh, shout out to the Glorious Trash blog, for example, where you know there's been some of that happening there. Not just the only place either. There's a guy who literally wrote the book on the subject uh, called Serial Vigilantes. We'll have that down in the sales links in the descriptions. Um, but again, Pendleton, I wondered. Uh, it starts off with the very checkered career, the usual kind of writer career, where he had a variety of jobs long before he became a successful author. Uh, dawn of World War II, after Pearl Harbor joins the Navy at 14, becomes a radio man. This is uh, something that happened quite a lot. They weren't checking IDs on December 8th, 1941. I know a guy who joined the Marines at, 19, uh, at the age of 14 in 1941. Um, so it gets out of there, becomes a telegraph operator for a railroad, becomes an air traffic controller, works on the engineering team for missiles at Raytheon, and at the age of 40 is when his writing career starts. Um, and eventually he is able to support himself at it. Writers nowadays have no idea that the market back then was so different because there was so much material out there. Every grocery store, every drug store, you know, uh, you know, gas stations, convenience stores, uh, you know, liquor stores, tobacconists. There would be a spinner rack if they let, it was the kind of place where they would let kids in. There was a spinner rack for comics, but there was also going to be a spinner rack for paperback books. Paperback originals had taken off massively, partly due to, you know, Mickey Spillane back in the 50s. Um, and, and with the runaway success of the Mike Hammer books, you know, a bunch of other people get in the game and the demand for this product is massive up into the 1980s. You would see them at the chain bookstores and independent bookstores as well. You know, I bought Mac Bowen books at, at B. Dalton's and Walden books, you know, back in the day. Um, but, you know, Pendleton hits it big. Pinnacle Books is created as an imprint to actually service the Bolin series in particular. And he wrote 30, well, I'm sorry, he wrote 37 of those for Pinnacle because during contract uh, disputes at one point, a ghost author did do one book in the Boland series, and this is the one that has not been uh, reprinted, so to speak, as a Kindle book, uh, because the, those original 37 uh, Pinnacle books are all out on Kindle now. And again, we'll have some sales links for those. You, you know, definitely uh, start there. As with so many of these series, start with the first one. You like that first one, keep on rolling. Kindle, you could get them on Kindle for sheer convenience of having them, but if you get into this stuff, uh, you're going to start haunting used bookstores. Because if you start to like this genre, you will come to know its highs and its lows 
and it's good and it's bad. And that will vary some with individual taste. Um, some of these things are very well written. Pendleton in particular elevated this genre about as far as it could go. Again, Murphy and Sapir with the Destroyer series, same thing. Um, you, you know, some people put a lot of thought into this. Some people, it was just a job. They were banging them out. So the quality level of this genre and all these various, various series, and there were dozens of these series. Some of them would only last, you know, two or three books, man. If they, if they didn't fly off the shelves to begin with, the publishers who dealt with these things did not spend a lot of time giving things chances. They would either hit it once, or if they you know, didn't really do it, they're gone. Um, what set Pendleton apart from everybody else? I think there's an overall quality of writing um, that's, that's higher than a lot of people who worked in this area. And also, if you come to like the execution of books, um, you, the, you will see stylistic ticks of Pendleton's in, the, in those first 37. Um, and one of these is taking a philosophical look at violence and the cost that that violence exacts on the man. In the course of those original 37 books, Bolin is reputed to have killed over 2,000 mafia guys, man, because that was the focus of his, of his uh, vigilante endeavors at that time, was eradicating the mafia in America. Um, later on, he would move on to international terrorism and fighting the KGB and some other things like that. But in those early books, it was mobsters. And now, like, again, there were a whole bunch of imitators of those. Uh, the Butcher, of course, was an ex-mafia guy, and he was out to croak all the mafia people. Uh, the Destroyer fought the mafia on, on uh, many occasions. But we were given, we were privy to Bolin's internal monologue in these books. Bolin thought a lot about the, you know, the, the aspects of, of his mission. Um, he would get into, you know, the metaphysics of violence. Um, you know, was it always successful? Well, your mileage is going to vary. Some people love that stuff. Some people regard them as, as, as you know, cliches. Um, you know, I respect it, certainly. Um, I want to say, make that very clear. I, you know, um, but the very fact that he tried, where a lot of people didn't, a lot of people just concentrate on the body count. And for a lot of the people, for a lot of the readers of this material, they were just after the body count and the mayhem. Um, but, you know, Don tried to give them something more. Uh, Murphy and Sapir tried to give them something more. And so did other authors. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to paint with too broad a brush. It's like any kind of writing You've got artists and you've got hacks and you've got people that, that fall in the middle. So, um, you know, so all of those series I named, you could try those. Um, I think just to dip your toe in the water, you're either going to want to go with the execution or you're going to want to go with the destroyer. I mean, those are really speaking for myself, my top two. Um, but like I said, we'll have sales links for as much of that stuff as we can. You'll point you at those. Um, so this just gives you a broad overview of the genre. Uh, so we'll be back next week. Next week, I believe we are going to talk about Robert B. Parker and Spencer books and the modern incarnation of Spencer that are, that is written by, uh, Ace Atkins, uh, who is a guy who is definitely worthy of mention. And, um, you know, if he's not, he will probably, I guess, be the first living author we'll talk about week after that. Another living author. We're finally getting up to the point where we'll talk about those, and that'll be Andrew Vax and the Burke books. Um, so, uh, please follow the channel. Please sign up for notifications for the channel. Please buy something from the sales links to support the vlog. Please buy my books. Those will be down there. I um, want to thank you very much for taking your time for this, and I will talk to you next week. And I hope you find something you like here. There's a whole lot to look at and uh, good hunting because if you get into it, it's definitely going to be an endeavor and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hope you have a good time. Thanks. We'll talk to you next week.